The FBI says it is not ruling out anything in yesterday's shooting at Los Angeles International Airport. An Egyptian man opened fire at the El Al ticket counter, killing two people before being shot by an airline security guard. As Anita Vogel reports, the U.S. is not calling this an act of terrorism. Those who saw him said he looked like a normal guy and that he was even nicely dressed. But authorities say 41-year-old Egyptian national Hasham Mohammed Hadayet was far from normal and that he came to the Los Angeles International Airport on a mission. It appears that he went there for the intention of killing people. Hadayet succeeded in killing two innocent bystanders and wounding four others. But the motive behind his actions is still unclear to the FBI. Today, their agents addressed the controversy over continuing claims by the Israeli government that this was an act of terrorism. The Israeli government, uh, when a violent act takes place on an entity of Israel or an individual of Israel, they presume terrorism first until proven otherwise. We cannot make such presumptions like that. Hadayet was considered a resident legal alien and had lived in the U.S. for about 10 years working as a limo driver. Authorities have searched his home and removed his computer and other files. But the FBI maintains they had not heard of this man before the 4th of July. He has not been on any FBI or any FAA watch list. Investigators halfway around the world questioned Hadayet's wife and family in Egypt. His family had only just traveled there in recent weeks. Meanwhile, here at LAX, operations have returned to normal with an extra layer of security. But many question how much security is enough to prevent someone from walking in the front door of an airport with a loaded gun. In Los Angeles, Anita Vogel, Fox News. Airports across the country increased security after yesterday's shooting. Molly Hennenberg has more on what's being done to make airline ticket counters safer. Transportation experts are evaluating, again, security at the nation's airports after Thursday's fatal shooting at the Los Angeles International Airport. Security improvements following the 9-11 attacks focused on the airplanes themselves and the passengers and baggage that get on them. But the issue now is ticket counters. Anyone can walk up to most of them without going through a security checkpoint. Los Angeles Mayor Jim Hahn questions the wisdom of that. Right now the, sec the perimeter of security is to prevent anybody from getting on that plane. Uh, up till that point in time, people don't go through security screening. Uh, you know, I think that we need to take a look at that. But air safety experts say no matter how far back you move the security perimeter, the public will always be vulnerable. We have to be sure that, that we're not jumping to conclusions, spending a lot of time, a lot of manpower, and quite frankly, multiplying uh, the inconvenience. While baggage and passenger screeners are scheduled to become federal employees by the end of the year, security at the ticketing areas will still be the responsibility of the airlines. And as long as ticket terminals remain open to the public, they also remain open to the same dangers of any public place in America. We've seen it at McDonald's, we've seen it on the highways, we've seen it in banks, we've seen it at the U.S. Capitol a number of years ago. I think we have to be careful that we don't jump to conclusions that this is part of the um, terrorist battle that we're fighting. In another part of that battle, a warning from the government to airline pilots, urging them to be very careful with their uniforms and identification badges. A spokesperson for the Transportation Department says it has received reports that some airline pilots' hotel rooms have been broken into and their uniforms and ID badges stolen. In Washington, Molly Henneberg, Fox News. Federal authorities today issued a warning to small plane owners to tighten security, saying there is credible evidence that terrorists could turn to small planes to carry out attacks. Police say a man who led officers on a 100-mile-an-hour chase near San Francisco this morning may be mentally unstable. Police brought the vehicle to a stop by puncturing the tires with a spike strip. It then turned into a four-hour standoff that shut down one of the two major southbound routes from San Francisco to San Jose. The ordeal came to a dramatic end when police sprayed the car with fire 